Welcome to another edition of the EAC Member Only Communication Agency Brief. Today we're fortunate enough to have EAC CEO David Cromie with us to update us, on, update us on what's happening at EAC. Thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule, Dave. The 2014 CPD calendar. Last time I had a look, there was 100 registrations across New South Wales, in excess of actually, and um, I was just wondering if you could give us some feedback on, on what the feedback was and what other options that EAC members have for their CPD training if they can't make it to any of the scheduled events that we've got going. Okay, thanks Damien for the interview this morning. The workshops have been very well received. Um, you said there's been a lot of uh, attendees coming along. We mm -hmm. had Goulburn last week with 23 attendees. Nice. And um, I've been looking at the feedback forms as they've uh, come back in mm -hmm. and uh, the feedback on the content and uh, delivery by Jeff Hunter has uh, been excellent. Mm -hmm. We're also, in addition to the CPD workshops, we're providing uh, more customised training to officers on a um, per office basis. So we have, uh, for example, uh, four officers up in the Ojukuro in Coffs Harbour. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't need to do their CPD. So we actually go into their office and pr deliver training that's actually customised to their requirements. Okay, and Jeff Hunter goes in and does that training yeah, for Yeah, Jeff, Jeff does that. So Jeez, we simply cool. provide a day rate mm -hmm. um, to go in and do that, and we can provide the training and the uh, CPD certificates as well. Mm. And that day rate, it depend obviously if they're in Sydney or Coffs Harbour or, or, or how hard it is for Jeff to get there and all that's that sort of stuff. That's correct, and again, how many attendees, because some of these uh, courses, they have up to 20, 30 people there, so mm. we've... Nice Just factor that in. And, and members that only have to contact the 1300 number to find out um, the schedule, if they, could, if they could get Jeff out there, what do they do to make some inquiry on that? They, just, they can either email seminars at eac.com.au or just ring the 1300 number and we can, uh, we can work it out with Jeff and, uh, and go from there. Nice one. Uh, the New South Wales heats of the 2014 Australasian Real Estate Institute's Auctioneering Championships, mouthful there, will be held again this year. Um, EAC will be conducting it again um, due to the success of last year. Um, Dave, can you give us an update on what the plans are for this year and, and how soon will um, contestants be able to enter? Okay, we're looking at uh, holding the competition on the 24th of June. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it'll be done in conjunction with the uh, Real Estate Institute of Australia. And uh, we're looking to build on last year's event in which we had 15 auctioneers fighting it out to go to the uh, national championships. Mm -hmm. uh, this year the national championships will be held in Auckland. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, we're just finalising the changes to the rules for this year's competition and then we'll have the entry forms up on the AC to come to you, ready for the auctioneers to enter. And um, the actual championship is open to all auctioneers across New South Wales. Nice one. So what we're hoping uh, this year is to get two really good... Uh, auctioneers that we can send across to Auckland to try and take the title back from New Zealand who won it again last year. Yeah, that's in the winner just about every year. We even had a couple of good guys from the same office, from Bessick Whiteley in Darlinghurst, I think, yeah. representing New South Wales this year. Uh, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll obviously send out some communications in relation to uh, um, when that event's going to kick off and when you can enter, for sure. Um, Last week there was a bit of noise about the new regulations concerning the um, residential condition reports and the inclusion of the safety device statement on those. Now we've updated our EAC e-forms online, um, but what should officers or members do um, in relation to their old condition report forms that don't have that uh, statement in it, Dave? Okay, on, on the 28th of February the Office of New South Wales Fair Trading put out a communication uh, to the industry saying that they needed to add window safety devices to the windows and screens section of the condition report. Uh, we've been in contact with uh, Fair Trading. They did this without um, consultation with the industry, mm. so it came across uh, our desk at the same yeah. time. It was a bit of a surprise. Uh, we have updated our e-forms and they, are, they uh, are all ready to go. With the printed forms, uh, our current printed forms are still compliant. Mm -hmm. And what you need to make sure that you do is when um, using the form, just add that uh, window safety devices to each line where you've got the window screens and, um, and just go from there. Oh, we job. are still in discussions with, uh, with Fair Trading. They are talking about further changes to the, to the condition report for the swimming pool amendments that are going to come in on the 29th of April. And uh, we're a little bit hesitant to reprint that form until we know fully what Obviously, yeah. Those changes are, and uh, they said that they will consult with us this time in regards to those changes. <laughs> well, that was good. Huh? Um, 
Mate, I noticed we've got a couple of new vehicles in the car park. Um, and we usually get those from the Parramatta Motor Group. Now, I know that EAC members know that we have a, a national fleet discount available to members, but not only just to members, but to their staff. But what type of vehicles um, are on offer in that package? Do you have any idea there, Dan? Members can get national fleet discount. Uh, Parramatta Motor Group, they do um, Hyundai, which we've been getting. They mm -hmm. do Nissan, they do Mitsubishi, they do Jeep. Dodge, Fiat, yeah. um, so there's a wide range of cars that uh, you can actually uh, get off them. Yeah. Um, our latest car we've got, uh, for example, is a Hyundai i40. Nice. Um, the cost of that car is uh, just over thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and um, EAC as an EAC me member can get a, a fleet discount, and I think that discount saved us some four thousand eight hundred dollars nice. on a thirty thousand dollar car oh good stuff so good stuff. you really need, only need to buy one car to pay for your ac membership for a year yeah i know so. um and and members can just get in contact with the membership services team to find out more about that or how do they get in touch uh, they can it? either contact us on uh, the one three hundred number mm -hmm. or they can go to Parramatta motor group um, talk to Jeff Jackson and just say you're an EAC member and uh, Jeff will take care of you. Yeah, he's been looking after us for quite some time. Um, just lastly, on a more of a personal note, I'm led to believe that you've got some big cycling events coming yeah, up I and do. always wondered um, what sort of distances will they be and, and what sort of training, what sort of discipline do you have to give yourself to get ready for something like that? Uh, we've got a couple of rides coming up. On the 23rd of uh, March, we've got the Bob and Head Classic. Mm -hmm which is 104 kilometres, mm -hmm. uh, leaving from Taramara out through the Kringai National Park to West Head, up through Coona Bay and back to Taramara. So a lot of hills. A lot of hills. Yeah. That, that's that's a, a big ride. And uh, the second ride we've got on the 6th of April is the Blaney to Bathurst, which is 110 kilometres. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, as you've pointed out with the Bob and Head Classic, there's a lot of uh, big hills. So right, leading up to the ride, we'll probably be riding between 100 and, say, 200 kilometres a week. Jesus. And uh, factoring in a lot of hills. So, for example, on Saturday we did a quick ride out to Bob and Head and back from... Uh, Just around the corner. From where I live. Yeah. It was about an you know, 80 kilometre ride. And um, so it's just spending time on the bike. And then obviously nutrition plays a part in it on the day. Absolutely. Now, is there any sort of charities involved with these cycling events? Can anyone get involved in sponsoring you or anything? Yeah, there like are that? there are charities involved. Um, you know, some of them um, we've do, done rides for for MS, mm -hmm. um, the Smith family, and uh, you, you can actually sponsor them because they are actually for for a good cause. Yeah. So. We'll just keep an eye on the uh, EAC Facebook site for that. We'll have details up there if any of the members want to get behind any of these worthy causes and. Um, watch Dave uh, flog himself, basically. Um, well, well, thanks again for your time this morning, mate. That's all we've got time for. Um, just like to leave by saying, don't forget about the CPD courses, guys. Um, go into the EAC website, have a look at our CPD calendar for 2014, and principals and property managers will be especially interested in having a look of what we've got to offer there. Uh, four hours for $135. You can't get much better than and that. The big thing there, Dane, with our training also, because of our status as an industry body, there's actually no evaluation. Oh, absolutely, before. yeah. So um, you just come and do the training. Obviously, we want to make sure that you are competent, mm -hmm. but there's actually no eva evaluation to be done at the end of the course. So. Mm. Everyone's a winner. Um, lastly, um, to keep up on uh, up to speed on all the EAC events, and like we said before, um, see what Dave's doing in his rides, as well as finding out our events, communications, all the industry related news, please go and visit us on Facebook. You can log on or you can go down to the bottom of this um, newsletter and just click on the Facebook symbol there and like us and you'll never have to go.